Hey, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove your tub surround from hollow walls, from vapor barrier walls, and from firewalls without damaging your steel tub. Stay tuned. So changing the tub surround is generally about a two-day process, which means you can do it on a weekend. It's a great weekend warrior project, and all we do is we just remove the walls, and we're going to actually change our faucet as well because we get a little bit better looking fixture. We have the old acrylic handle, and so we're going to update that. And we're going to put in a pot light because generally showers don't have any lighting in them and it's kind of odd isn't it so we're going to fix that so three quick little things new tile new faucet pot light now you've got a bathroom that's going to look beautiful so in a lot of bathrooms you'll see the minimum code requirement for a shower is generally a water resistant drywall and then this tile is just you know installed with an adhesive for some reason here they managed to put a little better material back here this is a cement board with little styrofoam bubbles so it doesn't get too heavy but when you have a different substrate behind the tile than your wall beside it you know that there's a seam here and usually it's just the joint right off the edge of the tub and you bring the tile over here to cover the gap so but before we take this off we want to just cut down here but in case there's any silicone or caulking you want to cut through the the paint layer this is really necessary because if you don't want to increase the scope of work to involve the entire bathroom then you got to make sure that when you're ripping this apart you're not damaging the actual wall right next to it and just make sure you cut all the silicone joints in the tub surround before you get started and everything will come apart real easy Next thing you want to do is just take a large flathead screwdriver or a chisel, a red bar, a painting tool, whatever you get and get to get in behind that tile. There we go. Chisel it off. And yep, it's an adhesive. Lovely. Just remember when you're removing tile, it's like installing it only backwards. And there's our joint tape right there. different tool here so the point of taking my time here is I'm gonna be having this decorative box I mean I'm keeping this here when you're moving you don't want to create a whole lot of scope of work you don't want a massive renovation you just want to dress it up right we're putting some lipstick on the pig as it is so my tile line needs to finish about the same spot right here off this corner or it's gonna look stupid so what I have to do is make sure I don't damage the wall so I can bring my tile line right up to this caulking joint. So that's why you got to be a little bit careful here so that you can control exactly what the scope of work is. So you might lose a few minutes here, but it'll save you a couple of days of fussing around, mudding and painting and all that sort of thing. Remember, the point here is to add value to your house without adding a lot of extra work. Now we've found our joint. Here's our cement board, and there's my joint. That's where it makes the transition from cement board to drywall. And the reason you want to find this when you're doing your removal is because they frame this bathroom to join up here. If you just start taking a hammer to this and ripping it out, you don't find that joint. Now you've also got to add the step of going to the hardware store and picking up you know, the dimensional lumber and putting more framing into your wall. But if you just take the time to find out what it is that they were doing when they built it, now we can back it up to here. So when I'm smashing things out now to remove the wall, I know I'm going to go to this point only. So I'm just going to back this tile up until it's not on the drywall anymore. And then we'll be able to rip this wall off in just two easy steps. So in a previous video, we had a technique where we just take the hammer and now that we can see the plumbing, we know where the lines are. We just smash through the wall here. And that gives us the ability to just shake it up a little bit, open it like a door, right? Problem here, this tub is not getting changed out. And we don't want to open this like a door and put a bunch of scratch grooves into the surface of the tub. So what you need to understand is we have this opportunity here because the tub comes with its integrated tile flange. Okay, so basically it's molded across and then back up. 
and the wall board comes down to that flange, about an inch off the tub. So what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally break through the tile at the bottom, okay, where that tile flange is, and then just remove these little bits. This gives us the ability to do this under control. There we are. Now generally speaking, the enamel on the tub is pretty durable stuff, but I'm not going to take anything for granted and assume that the tile guy actually has a space between the tile and the tub. So, here we go. Well, typical, you know, I mean, we've got uh, a steel clip holding in the steel tub, but the steel clip isn't galvanized, so they... As soon as the water gets to it, it starts to rot away. So now that's all just rusting out. So now that we have that part done, we're back to the old process again. We're smashing this out. I got stud here. Nothing there. And remember, we're just breaking this down into easy to handle sizes, okay? So we can take it out in panels. This takes a lot more effort than drywall, obviously. So it's very important to know where all your plumbing is. Well, that takes a little bit more effort, but still rather take out large pieces like this to the garbage than little chunks. If you can locate the nails. So holding this board in, pull them out first. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. I hate working with this material. Okay, so if you live in a semi-detached home or a row house, you're gonna run into this problem. That is, a lot of the times these bathrooms are built on an adjoining wall. Now we can see in the corner here, we have a layer of drywall behind our cement board. And what that is, is that's a fire rated drywall. It'll be 5 8 type X fire code. And this is required so that there's an extra long time before a fire can burn from one unit to the next. It's a safety measure. It's part of the building code for a long, 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 long time. So if you have one of these situations, you're probably gonna have to remove this wall without damaging the fire rated drywall. If you damage that drywall, then you should replace it and then tape the joints again. That takes a lot of extra time and energy, so we're going to do a little removal here without messing up that drywall, hopefully. <laughs> and we want to pull off the entire row of tile. Unfortunately, there's really no fast way around this. So the reason that the client wants to have this removed is because she's getting mold coming across the bottom through that silicone joint. And generally when you start seeing mold showing up in your silicone, it means that the water damage has gone to a point where you can't manage it anymore and you've got to change it over. So here's the joke. We have a cement board with a tile. Where's the mold coming from? Because it needs a food source. Water and wood alone won't make that mold travel all the way through. But now we know that there's a drywall in behind it. <laughs> So now we know that the water is transferring past the cement board and into that drywall because the drywall acts like a sponge. 
which is why when you build a shower and you put cement board up, it's not enough on its own for waterproofing. It just slows the process down. It doesn't keep it from happening. So I'm not even sure what the condition of that fire rated drywall is going to be in when we get there. Hooray. So the property of this cement board is very similar to drywall in, in its construction and design is there's a, a mesh on the front instead of paper. And then there's this interior fill, okay, which is cement and styrofoam bubbles, just so it doesn't get too heavy. And then on the other side, again, is another mesh. So what we're trying to do is get in behind that last layer of mesh and get that separation going. And hopefully pull it loose without damaging the firewall. Okay, there's the first piece. That's not bad at all. Now, it's just a matter of really finding out how many fasteners they use to put that wall up. This is all going to come together when it comes. If you're lucky enough that your bathroom isn't on a shared wall, then it'll be the same process as over here. We just smash the holes through and pry it off the wood and then you're done. But like I said, if you have a shared wall, make sure you protect it. You might be saving someone's life someday. different substrates. Empty cavity, firewall, vapor barrier. <laughs> Just doesn't get any more fun, does it? <laughs> uh. There's a joint somewhere around here. Now, this one actually is taped with paper tape right on that joint, right next to where the tile finishes. So if I don't cut that paper first, there we go. I was gonna pull all that paintwork apart and we're right back to doing all that paintwork again. Oh, too easy. There we go. Well, there we have it. We're all done our removal process for this shower renovation. Now remember, this, this kind of information today is really vital if you have, live in a semi-detached or in a row house, or if you're a condo dweller and you live in an apartment building, you're always gonna see these fire separation walls in your bathroom. So be prepared for it and don't get too excited with the hammer. Um, following up after this video, I think the next video come out is gonna be released about the plumbing. If you're a condo person, you're guaranteed to be copper plumbing. We're gonna go through the ins and outs on how to do it. Just a copper retro with a brand new shower valve. So keep your eyes out for that video. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions about this removal process or any of the products or tools used today, put them in the comments below. I answer those things every single day, of course, and we'll help you get through your project too. See you next time.